this time to encourage all the Gen Zs for having led what we as parents have failed. I'm not a Gen Z myself because actually by, by all the generation, me, I'm a baby boomer. <laughs> baby boomers, for us, our work was to shatter all the cultural boundaries and feel like we are one as a country. There's no cultural boundaries that bind us. Baby boomers have intermarried like us. Most of us have not been married from all tribe. We are baby boomers. We shattered all the tribal boundaries. We believe we are Kenyans. We believe that all Kenyans are the same in the laboratory. If you test Kenyans, there will be no tribe. There will be no culture in our blood. We shall only have one Kenyan blood, which comes from our forefathers and ancestors. So that's who we are. We shattered that. And I don't tell Gen Z's that there's something the millennials did. Generation X has did theirs. Gen X has did theirs. Now, Gen Z, this is your work. God bestowed upon you to revolutionize Kenya and transform this country so that we can have good leadership. It is your moment. Let no one shout at you. You are not children. You are above 18. You have age of consent. You are educated. You are not just children. You are also citizens. And citizens, you have a right. And you can demand for your rights. When you come to the street, demand for your rights. I want to tell all policemen who are coming tomorrow, we are coming with your children. We are coming with your uncles and nieces. We are coming with your aunts. We are coming with your grandmothers. Please know that if you shoot, you might just shoot your aunt. You might just shoot your daughter. You might shoot your son. So don't listen to what you are being told by the head of state. Because what's happening is, his time is up, but yours is not yet. So his time is up, yours is not up. So ensure you protect Kenyans, be on the side of Kenyans, because that's the only side anyone can be. If you are on the side of the government, you are on the wrong side. The right side is being on the government, on the students, on the, on the citizen side. And we are just concerned citizens. We are nothing else, we are not terrorists. We are not anything else. We are not trying to demand something wrong. We are just citizens who are concerned, who are demanding their rights, and they deserve to demand for those rights. And no one should tell us what to do, because all of them have been defeated. Some of our parents have agreed that there's a system. Some of them have agreed that there's a deep state. Some of them have agreed that there are structures. But remember, Gen Z's are what I call mold breakers. They have broken all the mold. Don't tell us to go to the, to the regional office to look for permission from the police. Those are molds. We don't buy molds here. For us, there's no mold. We know we have a right. We come to the street and we show our discontent and to show the government the direction because we have listened for almost two years. No direction is going on. So I can encourage you, continue what you are doing because if you don't do it, no more generation will do what you are doing now. It has been stored upon you by God. And I want to encourage you, do not be desperate. You are not fighting your own battle. You are fighting the battle of Yahweh. In Numbers 21, 14, Yahweh has never lost a battle. Even if you read Romans 12, 21, Yahweh always wins. And you will win. Don't be desperate. Do not be threatened by tankers. They are not enough to finish us. The ones which will remain will take Kenya forward. And for now, we are taking an oath. It is life and death. When it is life and death, our strategy is different from someone trying to save his life. For us, it is life and death. You save your life. Jesus said, if you give up your life, it will be given to you. If you keep it so tightly, it will be taken away. So we live tomorrow, we are giving our life, and that life will be given back to us. Thank you. So first and foremost, I'm Professor Fred Ogola. I am one of the conveners of Concerned Citizens Movement. And I'm a concerned citizen of Kenya, just like any other person. So first of all, I want to explain to you why am I on the street today and why will I be on the street from tomorrow until we achieve our dream. The first and foremost thing, this is personal. I was a professor in Strathmore for more than 12 years. I am among the most qualified professors we have in this country. And I'm standing here jobless with five undergraduate degrees, two masters, a PhD, 16 World Bank certification, and I'm jobless. It's not because I could not get a job. It's that I got a job 
and the president made a call to where I was working and asked them to fire me and replace me with his son-in-law. So his son-in-law is working in the office where I was working. And I'm asking myself, is that a president who has a heart? So even if people are annoyed and mad at him, will I sympathize with him because he can fire people directly and replace with his cronies? And I'm not the only one. All the prostitutes, he has plucked people out of it and put people he wants. Kenya Gazette Notice has been very busy since the president took office. Hiring and firing. Firing and hiring. Creating an office after an office. And replacing them with cronies. So I will be on the street because I'm there with all the 24 million Kenyans who cannot find a job. And William Ruto has put the economy on reverse gear. What do I mean? The Kenyans are qualified. The human resource capacity of Kenya are ahead of the economy because the economy is being driven from the reverse gear. And he has put the reverse gear, freezing all employment, like the Kenya, the budget, the budget for 2024, 2025. He has frozen the budget. And I'm asking myself like an economist, how can a budget of 4.2 trillion shillings not create even a single job? If the government has frozen a job, what, who is going to create these jobs for them? The president also simply said that he is going to take 500 Kenyans per month to Germany to work. By now, there should be 120,000 Kenyans going to work in Germany. Where are they? The president who do not want to create a job for its people, Kenyans are suffering. So the president is killing Kenyans and is killing them using a pen, which means finance bill. The finance bill of 2023-2024 was a, was, a was a death penalty to us. Now he has brought another one, which we miss that penalty. There's other penalty which has come, which is more painful, finance bill 2024. I'm on the street because it is personal, and this personal thing is not only to me. It is all other Kenyans who are employed. Imagine 525,000 students join campus, university campus, every year, and they have frozen employment. Meaning only him and his cronies can actually get jobs. So I'm on the street because I must ensure that I change my destiny. And I'm urging all Kenyans who share the same feeling like me, that we better go to the street and die on the street than to die at home of hunger. We are actually dead. So I've heard again that he has moved military artillery to State House. They are there. Even the tankers in State House now, as I speak. So what I'm trying to say is that Marcos did the same. This is a revolution which is unstoppable. The only thing that will stop it is when we get our demands. And, and today I've left my house. You see, I'm dressed. I'm not dressed like a professor today. I've told my family, bye-bye, if you see me, it means Ruto is not the president. So I'm on the street to be on the street until the president resigns from office because we have rejected the finance bill, which he created. And also we have to reject the author. When you reject the eggs, you must reject the chicken also. So the cause of our pain is one William Ruto. If you go on the, on the road, you see potholes everywhere, nothing being done, that is him for you. You apply for passport, you see the press, you see Ruto there. When you apply for ID, you see Ruto there. When you go to school, you see Ruto there. When you go to a petrol station, you see Ruto there. Even if you are sleeping at night, you hear tokens are over. You see Ruto in the tokens. So Ruto in the morning, Ruto in the midday, and Ruto at night when you go to bed. No, we cannot take it. We cannot afford William Ruto. Let him go to Abu Dhabi because he says he can raise funds. When you told him to use KQ, he said he used a plane from Abu Dhabi. He knows how to mobilize resources. Instead of bringing the finance bill that makes Kenya broke, let him go to Abu Dhabi, get the money from his financiers, and live his life. But he cannot live his life in Kenya, let him go to Abu Dhabi. We cannot afford the president. We cannot afford his lies. We cannot afford his misleading statements. We cannot wait any further. Our patience is done, and that's what he's facing. Thank you.